You're listening to the Let's Talk Marketing Podcast hosted by me, Kasia Allison. So what have you gotten yourself into? In short, a good time, great conversation, and a little bit of learning along the way. Through insightful interviews with top marketers, entrepreneurs, and thought leaders, I explore the latest trends, techniques, and strategies in the world of marketing. I am here to offer you engaging and informative discussions to help you stay up to date on the latest trends and also take your marketing skills to the next level. In this episode, we are covering branding and marketing yourself with my good friend, Joanna Voss. She is a talented manager for multicultural, multi-generational female social media influencers from various backgrounds and has represented nano to mid-tier influencers in the lifestyle, food, health and wellness, and home verticals, securing over $4 million in brand partnerships and speaking engagements. Wow. Now, prior to being a talent manager, Joanna worked on presidential campaigns for Hillary Clinton and John Kerry for more than seven years. She's adventurous, a world traveler, and just a good time to talk to. So let's talk marketing with Joanna Voss. All right. Welcome to Let's Talk Marketing. I'm just going to call you Joe uh, because we're that close. Um, and it was the nickname that you didn't know that I had for you as well. <laughs> I'm really excited to have you on. You were obviously on the other podcast as well, too. It's always such a good conversation with you. This one's a better podcast, though. I agree. We <laughs> <laughs> wheeling conversations. Exactly, exactly. We had a whole podcast before we started recording. That's what people are going to want to hear. We should do like a whole other side podcast of what happened before we we hit record. Yeah. That'll be another one. I'll make a little, I'm dog earing that for the, for the next time. But today we're going to talk about branding and just kind of marketing yourself. But before we dive into that, let's get to know you a little bit better. So I want to hear what was your first kind of marketing role or what you would consider marketing role and then what's your current role now? So, well, first of all, I'm Joanna. <laughs> um, I do have a sweet, lovely group of people in my life that call me Joe. So I do have a lot of affection for that. Um, my mom is from London. So basically all my family over there calls me Joe, which like I kind of just love. Um, so I do like that you call me Joe. And Taylor also <laughs> calls me Joe from day one, who Taylor, Barrington Booker, we love you too. Okay. So yes. Mark, huge fan of hers. <laughs> yes. Um, so there is a very solid lineup of guests, present company included, I will say for this podcast. So like you're off to a stellar start. I, like it. I appreciate it. Uh, okay. So first marketing role. Didn't think about it as marketing. I've never had a traditional marketing thing. If you look at my LinkedIn there's nothing on there that says marketing, but let's be honest, kind of like always be closing. Everything is marketing, especially yeah. now because we're all selling ourselves on the internet, on socials, on LinkedIn as an expert in the space. So my first marketing role was actually my first job out of college. I worked on political campaigns. So nice. not only my first marketing role, but also my first sales role. Like I've basically always been in marketing and sales. Yeah. I didn't realize that until you asked me this question, but yeah, I was, I was, um, I worked on John Kerry's campaign. Um, actually before that I worked at the university of Oregon, uh, doing environmental campaigns. So like clean air, clean water. So you're mm -hmm. marketing clean air and clean water. And then um, I moved on to candidate specific campaigns, but those are my first, those are my first marketing roles. From, uh, from politics to talent management, huh? Because that's what your current role is now, right? Yes. Oh, my current role is I'm a talent manager with a detour <laughs> to being a health coach, a travel person. So yes, lots of circuitous ways to get where I am, but very happy to be here. And I am currently, and I believe for a very long time in the future, will be a talent manager. I love it. What do you currently love about what you do? But also, what would you pluck out of it if you if there's anything you could pluck out? So what um, do you love? I love all of it, except for a few things. Okay, so I love <laughs> when I love the negotiation. I don't like when agencies and brands pay late. That's very annoying, and I don't like rude. Yeah, it's so true. So true. Yeah. Consistent yeah. feedback. But love negotiation. 
Um, I love that, like, for lack of a better word, sparring, not necessarily to imply that all brand partner negotiations are that sparring, but I do love that, like, hey, we want the client. We've got this, you know, we want your talent. We've got this scope of work and this much money in XYZ. And I'm like, ooh, okay, well, how about this? Like, this would be a better scope of work because of the content would perform better on these platforms. And like, this would be the rate. Okay, well, we will take 85% of that. And how about we meet in the middle with this number? And I'm like, ooh, okay, yeah. yeah. Like, I, I really enjoy that. Um, yeah. I'm that person now when you go out to a bar and like I'm with friends or I'm somewhere, like I always use this example of buying the mattresses. I'm like, basically, what can I get for free? Or what can I negotiate down? Like, can you give me free delivery? Like, what if I buy this? Or like, can you throw this in? Or can you give me a 10% discount? Um, I was actually buying flooring for a ADU, which is an accessory dwelling unit, which is the wonky word that Denver uses for basically like a new build that's like a mother-in-law or a carriage house or yeah, know, rental, short-term rental. Um, so I was buying flooring the other day and I have an online code for 5% off because I signed up for their email newsletter list, but I was in the store. So I was like, hey, any chance you can apply the 5% code? Like I just will like try and talk my way into as much, not like free stuff, but just like get as no. much as you possibly get. I mean, and I like that. I'm hearing you, I, I'm hearing you say that there is a deal. There is a deal to be uncovered. I am that way when I walk into T-Mobile and I'm ready to upgrade my phone. Yeah. That's also how I have my Apple Watch. I walked in. I was like, hey, I am open to upgrading because this is now available, but I also want an Apple Watch. So how can I get all these things and not mm -hmm. pay extra? Like there is, yeah. there's always a special out there because they don't want you to walk out of the door with nothing. Then they right. get nothing. Yes. Yes. And like, what's it to them to give you an Apple watch? So totally. That's yeah. awesome. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So I do love the negotiation part. Um, I'm in a space right now where like my community, people like yourself, Tammy Neely, Katie Stoller, Taylor Barrington Booker, Nicole Hampton, like there's just so many Molly Tracy. There's so many good people in my world that I love. And it's cool to support them, to connect, to like mastermind, mm -hmm. have ideas. Hey, what about this? Like I was had this idea the other day and Molly Tracy was just like sharing back. She's like, okay, so here are the things that are going to drive you crazy about it that you'll be very resentful. And I'm like, okay, cool. Yes. Thank you. Like you are not wrong because you know me in this. Good note. Yeah. So like, I just, it's great to be in community with these other women who fully support, engage. They're funny. Like there's a relatability. Um, so like, yeah. I really, really enjoy that. And then same for my talent. Like I love my talent. I love the women that I get to represent and we are intimately involved in each other's lives. And like, we laugh our asses off. We support each other. Like, it's such a beautiful thing. Like we have such a sisterhood. So I absolutely like, couldn't have curated that even better. Like that's just yeah. magic to me. Um, and I love similar to campaigns. Like there's no typical day. Like I have no idea what my day is going to yes. be. Like one email, one phone call could change things. Um, doing podcast interviews, maybe mentoring someone, working on a blog post article, writing a proposal, pitching, having a bunch of calls, taking inbound inquiries, hyping up a client, being a therapist for a client, like dealing with some crisis yeah. stuff. Like I, I love that. Like it's just super fun. It's never a boring day. No. So the only, the only thing you would pluck out is late payments. Mm-hmm. I would plug okay. out late payments. Um, I would pluck out, if this makes sense, I have one of my talent who lives in Denver, Yvette. I would love all my clients to live nearby so that we can yeah. hang out more. That would be really, really cool. And I wish I could just be there more for them in person for, yeah, you know, shoots or hanging out or just like whenever we get together, we always have the best ideas and brainstorming and ideas and like creativity and stuff. Plus it's just super fun to create content with them. So like, I wish yeah. we all were closer. Um, so I pluck out their locations, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I would change know. where all of my talent kind of is centralized. I like that. I mean, like I watch your posts all the time. I'm like, 
Huh. And I think the other day you're like, I wish I could go to coffee forever with everyone. And I'm like, yes, yes. let's go to yes. coffee. Let's go to coffee. I love that. Yeah. Well, and I would imagine that you have to really stay up to speed on everything that's happening. Um, I'm curious which social networks you leverage, if you leverage social networks for this, for education, inner inspiration, and entertainment. That was the third one. So do yeah. you leverage social networks for any of these three things is one and which ones are they? And if you don't, how do you actually get inspired and are entertained and keep on educating yourself? Yeah. So Instagram and LinkedIn. Um, LinkedIn is a 2023 addition to my world that I am trying to be more intentional and participate on. There's some really great conversations that are happening for influencer marketing things and just having more eyes and ears out there in the world. Like I definitely learn stuff, um, get connected to opportunities, um, just kind of like see what other people are chatting about, you know? Um, so that's been great. There's a number of people in my world, names we've already mentioned, who are really good about posting, you know, posting things that like spur these yeah. really interesting conversations. So like, I'm constantly reading that and creeping on people. Um, so I'm really enjoying LinkedIn for, for, but strictly just like influencer marketing professional things like related to my work, which yeah. I think is kind of like how LinkedIn operates anyway. Um, so, and then on Instagram, I will say caveat, like I'm not the best on following trends or like business insider articles about the latest things on TikTok. Like I, I read a ton of news. I don't read a ton of news about this industry and I don't have a real good reason why. Um, but I'm trying to like read and learn stuff. Mm -hmm. I'm also kind of like, a, okay, well maybe that's a hard article, but let's just kind of wait and see what happens. Like, let's just see how the rollout is or like, you know, Instagram's like, we have this new feature, right? We all know like, okay, well, let's just give it time and see if it has traction. So I'm, I'm sort yeah, of like, exactly. Like, Talk to me a month from now. <laughs> yeah. 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 I'm kind of like, okay, noted, but like, I'm going to go about my day. Um, yeah. but yeah, reading a lot of stuff on LinkedIn is very helpful to learn like what people are talking about and just checking in with other talent managers and brands and agencies and you know, what they're experiencing or what they're seeing or, you know, gosh, there's been a rise in requests for like UGC, user generated content. What do I need to know about that? So I'll like, I have yeah. people I know to go to to ask questions and just kind of like see what they're posting about. And then on Instagram is definitely where I go for creative inspiration. Okay. Uh, I will say I go there for it, but I get it from the platform all the time. So like saving okay. ideas, saving real ideas, like seeing what other people are doing or just like, oh yeah, yeah. Like someone will do a Q1 recap and I'm like, oh yeah, great idea. Like I haven't done one of those in a while. Like, let me do a Q1 recap reel of all the projects my talent's done. Um, so just fun things to do on Insta. Like my clients will forward me stuff and be like, oh, you could do this, Joanna. Like this would be a great reel for you. So that's just really fun. Like I'm definitely a creative person. And so it's been great getting those ideas. Um, I live in Denver. So like I find out a ton of stuff on Instagram about things that are happening in Denver, cool restaurants, bars, yeah. like what's going on in the botanic gardens. Like I, I love that. I get a bunch of books from Instagram, just what people are reading or like people that I follow who are also big readers um, and are just like posting on stories about what they're reading and current events, things that um, not necessarily real time, but I would say more around like social issues, race issues, yeah. uh, issues, um, there's a lot of things that are happening. Like the Boston marathon just happened and yeah. very white field, very white course, uh, or it goes through, you know, predominantly white towns. And so one of the cheering sections anyhow got heavily policed and it was heavily people of people of color. And so yeah. I would have never known, but it popped up on a number of, um, profiles that I follow. So like, that's just great to have that diversity of eyes and ears in other communities. Um, yeah. About what's going on. So like, that's really important to me. So I, I follow for a lot of those reasons. And um, I had another thought of why else I follow or, or let's see, education, inspiration. So yeah, education in that regard. I, also, I, I do look to Instagram um, in that regard for education. 
And of course, entertainment, because who doesn't love a good, just like funny meme about I know lady or something, you know what I mean? So I'm I'm always I, for those like funny things that my girlfriends and I are always just like, hee hee, this is us, lol. <laughs> All the time. I know. It's a full on love language on my end of the on my end of the spectrum. Totally. Like I love to share things that I see on Instagram from reels to TikToks, like you are waking up to something that I have found funny to the point where I'm like, I really shouldn't be just sending people these things. Yeah. Um, Cause I, I do, I just love to send it because it makes you think of someone and it's a good little chuckle. So I definitely understand that as far as entertainment. I, hold me and I, I know. I also like that you go for just kind of um, education and inspiration on Instagram as well too. Cause I don't, I tried to start the watch, tried to ooh, start to watch the news recently. And I'm like, this is just kind of on repeat. But what I like about Instagram um, is that it, it kind of bubbles up like top, top news. And when you see consistency, I'm then I dive into it. And then I know what I really want to, yeah. you know, sink my teeth into. So I kind of use it as inspiration to education, to like knowledge, if that makes any kind of sense. Yeah. How do you stay up on trends? Are there newsletters? Is it um, groups? Is it like, is there, I was going to say, is there a periodical that you frequently read? Oh, the periodical like, that I read. <laughs> um, I don't think I'm the best at staying up on trends. Uh, I think that my creators often educate me. Yeah. Uh, Jessica, who is my Curly Adventures, she will tell me things, which I'm very grateful for. She's like my eyes and ears out there in the streets of the Instagram and everything. Um, <laughs> Lorraine, also another client of mine, she will forward me stuff. Like her and I are constantly texting back and forth about different trends and, and things that she's seeing creators do or whatever. So I kind of, I lean on, I lean on the people around me. I'm not the best at, that's not where I spend a lot of time. Okay. Well, that makes sense. That makes sense. Are you ready to dive into let's talk marketing? Cause we're going to talk branding and marketing yourself. This is why I wanted you on here. Cause I think that you do an amazing job as a talent manager. You have to really put yourself out mm -hmm. there and you have to, you do such a great job at sharing about yourself, sharing about your business and sharing about your creators, right? That, that are part of your roster. So how much time are you spending though on marketing yourself and your business? What does that look like? Uh, all the time. Like I don't have, yeah. I mean, I don't, because I think exactly what you're saying is like, I am aware that everything I do that I share about a negotiation tip, um, behind the scenes clips from a video shoot with a client, hanging out yeah. with a client, um, snapping a screenshot of, you know, being on Zoom with all my clients, sharing a, hey, this happened to me recently with a brand experience and like, here's how I dealt with it. Um, sharing about my talent um, because I've been working for myself. I think I'm in my 13th year as an entrepreneur, just sharing kind of like, here's how I go about my day and like, here's how I manage my time. Here's how I, you know, run this business as a one woman show. Those are all the things. Like, even when I'm like, I'm going for a run or I'm going for a bike ride or like I'm sitting in a coffee shop or like, this was my day all day today. It's literally just me at my computer, like not moving. Those are all things because people are always watching and people, there are voyeurs out there yeah. of the good kind who are you know, clients, brands creeping on talent without engaging months out from a campaign. Um, people who watch me and will message me and be like, I am not ready to work with a manager yet, but I, I hope when I do that you're still taking clients, like you're such a great hype woman. Like I'd love to have someone like you in my corner. Like I get messages like that all the time. So I know people are watching and paying attention I don't share that stuff with ulterior motives. I just share it because I think it's fun and interesting. And in my little corner of the internet, like I would like to be, and I'm working towards being one of the top smaller boutique talent managers and to be an expert yeah. in this space. So if someone's like, hey, I need a tip about negotiation, how to build my talent agency, um, 
how to become an influencer, how to work with travel brands, you know, what are some just some good habits to have as an entrepreneur, like how to take, or, you know, as an influencer, like I've been doing it, but how do I up level? Like, I want people to be like, well, let me just type in Joanna Boss into Google and like, see what she's got or come to my Insta page. So are there ulterior motives? Yes. It's all like focused towards my business, but I don't have some like strategy and plan. I share because it's interesting to me and I am like an extrovert, enthusiastic person. So like, I love that kind of just sort of like, Hey, here's what I'm up to. And like, I don't mind talking about stuff. And then I know the things that, you know, being a talent manager, like people have so many questions, like, what do you do? When do I yeah. have one? Like just sharing about that, like behind the scenes kind of stuff. People find so yeah. helpful. Some of my best performing content is stuff where I'm like, Okay, so a brand said no to my request for budget. Here's what I said. Like, I'm not sharing anything revolutionary, but people are not talking about it. People are not, like, if you go to other talent managers' pages, they're not, like, they don't have a, there's there's not a lot, you know, of agencies that I know of where they've built, like, if you go to their page, their brand is affirming them as an expertise in the space. It may just be all about their talent, which is a hundred percent fine. I'm just choosing to share more about what it's like, what the experience is like, what a, what an influencer who's doing their third partnership, what they're running into is no different than me doing my like hundred thousand, hundred thousand yeah. conversation with a, with a agency, like just to validate, to normalize these experiences. Um, that's why I share and talk about stuff. And honestly, it's really fun. And like, it's the best conversations. That's so true. I am. What I hear you say is that it's really, it's about just kind of this where personal branding meets authenticity, right? Yeah. It sounds like you have a purpose and that's what drives the outcome of your branding, whether you call it that or not, right? You know the questions that you want to be able to answer. And it seems that you don't go against the grain of who it is that you are. You're not going to post something inauthentic that doesn't speak to like, that wouldn't naturally come up in a conversation that like maybe you and I are having or so, you and somebody else are having or that you're talking about with your creators. And I think that's what really comes across and this is why I love following you on Instagram as well too, because it does come across in that way. I do wonder though, did you go into it? Cause you said you've been doing this for 13 years and it, this is a great conversation for talent managers and really anybody that's even going into or thinking about going into marketing consulting, right? Because I think as marketers, we, everyone's always asking us questions, right? So it's prime for that. So because you've been doing this for 13 years, did you go into it? intentionally knowing what you wanted to get out of it. Meaning, no. you know, you want to be an expert. The answers already know. <laughs> like, no. You're like, you can stop there. No, no, no. Yeah, keep going. <laughs> no, but I mean, like, if you didn't, like at one point, did you realize, all right, this is where I want to, this is where I want to go. Cause I think like, especially as a, you know, an entrepreneur, you could be led in so many different yeah. directions, right? Okay. Like, so how do you hone in on like, hey, this is what my brand is. This is what I want it to be. Any um, advice? You, yeah. So you finally listen to all the people that have been telling you that, that <laughs> you just need to like own it more and to stop being so behind the scenes because what you have is valuable, interesting, and people want to know more about it. So yeah. I, was I intentional? No. When I started becoming an entrepreneur, I think I wasn't, wasn't until I was like three years in where I was, I wasn't like, oh, I want to, you know, you meet people that are like, I'm going to be an entrepreneur when I grow up because my whole family and my dad's side is like full of entrepreneurs. Not my story. I started it because <laughs> I need to like use my brain and make some money. And I probably yeah. wasn't until I was like three years in where I was like, oh, huh, I'm kind of an entrepreneur. Like didn't really think about it. Not intentional. Like I'm very much just like, have idea, take action, figure it out and think about it after the fact. So I had just been doing all this grateful that on the Venn diagram of what I like talking about, what I can talk about overlaps with what's interesting to people who follow me on social. Yeah. Um, and I 
you know, kind of started as like personal and fun. Like, right. We all did when Instagram came out, it was just right. Just a picture yeah. app. And so I had a client a couple years ago who was like, um, you should share about your clients and your agency and like what you're doing as a talent manager on your page. And I was like, okay, I think she told me that. I don't know if I took action right away, but I remember either she re-mentioned it or someone else said something, right? You need a couple nudges. And yeah. I was like, oh, and I like archived all my personal stuff. And then I just made it business related things, entrepreneurial related things from there on out. And it was about probably nine months ago, fall of 2022, a conversation with a client. Again, I think it's like just multiple nudges and you just have that one where it's like the <laughs> lightning, like, oh my God, this is like blinding flash of the obvious, right? And <laughs> exactly. So, Something all of a sudden opens up. You're like, wait a second. I have an idea. Genius <laughs> idea. What? Yeah, I can't believe I'm just thinking of this. Um, yeah. Yeah. And so one of my, one of my talent was like, Shonda was like, you're so like, the internet knows you as this talent manager space. Google, if you Google my name, it's like all things related to talent management stuff, like articles or podcast interviews or whatever. Um, and so she was like, you just need to own the space on the internet. Like <laughs> meaning when people Google stuff. And so I kind of was just like, oh, I could lean in and like monetize my website and build content and, and continue to build my authority in this space of talent yeah. management and influencer marketing. Are there people out there who are already doing this? A hundred thousand percent, but they kind of own like little slivers of it. You know, influencer did a yeah. partnership three years ago <clears throat> and wrote a blog post about how I negotiate with a brand. And they wrote an article. And if you go to the rest of their site, it's like lifestyle content or home goods. Yeah. So there's no like one person that owns like all the topics. Do you know what I mean? Or can be like a resource for all the topics. So she was like, literally Google's just waiting for you to do this. Like you just need to <laughs> lean in, come up from behind the scenes. I've had multiple people because I'm very much like a behind the scenes person. I don't want the attention and spotlight on me. And I've had a lot of nudges where it's like, you need to like get out there, which is an uncomfortable space for me, but I'm just like leaning in and trying it. So it's just like a bunch of nudges over time. And it's easy, right? They always say like, you should do what you could talk about forever. And I could talk about talent management, running a business, influence and marketing and politics, for <laughs> campaigning and stuff, but also like kind of all related to marketing and branding. So yeah, yeah, that's, that's kind of like the very long run on sentence answer to whatever your question was <laughs> about was this intentional? No. And how often I'm looking at myself, it's kind of just always, but again, it's not it's not haphazard, but I know and understand that people love that behind the scenes stuff and they like those little peaks behind the curtain. And I'm happy to be like, I had a great day. This is what happened. And also simultaneously, like this was my super unglamorous, non-sexy day today. Yeah. Well, I think it really all goes back to authenticity in regards to like what works in digital. And I, and you're right. Like there's not one brand, not one person that's going to talk about all things. As popular as Gary V is, he still doesn't hold like the space for all of the things, right? And I also think like your unique take on it is what people are subscribing to, you know? Mm -hmm. It's not just the topic, it's how you're dissecting it. It is also what is really popular on social media. Like that's what that's, I think, how creators develop who it is that they are. They have a unique perspective and mm -hmm. they're willing to take you behind the curtain. Mm -hmm. I think that you found a really great way of doing that as an entrepreneur too. And now you're a content creator. And I'm sure that you don't think of yourself as that, but you are a content creator. I I am coming around to this this year. <laughs> and a lot of different things, but yes, I'm, um, I, uh, yeah, I I see that and I get it. And it's interesting to take the conversations I have to other people about branding and be like, oh, Joanna, you're you're a baby content creator as well, you know, growing my Instagram and and building my brand on social and stuff. So it's fun. I mean, I love it. 
Yeah. And I think like, you know, I think oftentimes we think of content creators and think like, oh, they have to have like this massive following. Or in your case, I would think, no, I um, manage that talent. I am not Mm -hmm. like the talent, but you are both. And I think that you do such a great job of balancing both of them. I think one of the things from an outside perspective that I think that you also do really well is relationships. And not just because, you know, I met you a couple of years ago, but like, it is truly relationships. That's what I've found in my career. It's making that genuine connection with people, checking in, not not having an agenda. It's like, how are you doing? And I would imagine that that served you really well as a talent manager too. What, what do you say to like the importance of having relationships for your brand or in marketing? I mean, you'll get nowhere without them. In, yeah. in this phase or life, right? Like it's, yeah, it is all relational and it's all built on be it the relationship you have with your audience and your followers. If you're a podcast host, the relationship you have with your listeners, um, you know, a brand or a, a brand like the uh, relationship you have with your customers or your guests, if you're, you know, in the service industry or like a hotel or something or travel. Um, me with my clients, me with the agency and, you know, relations, relational relationship, blah, 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 contracts. With <laughs> we, we, we know what you're saying. We know what you're yeah. saying. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, if I have bad ones, like my clients aren't getting any work. Yeah. So I won't have clients. And I won't have an agency. So it'll be very quiet over here. Uh, so yeah, I mean it's super cliche, but it really is all relationship building and connection and you know, someone works for an agency and then they move to a different agency and they bring all the talent that they really liked working with to yeah. that new agency. It's like I've been following people through their careers where I'm just like, "Okay, hey, what's your new email address?" cuz here's my latest roster, you know, and and just yeah. staying with people and um you know, just being top of mind and following up. And that only comes if you're good at relationships and just people enjoy working with you. Like similarly, I don't want to work with any talent that's like high maintenance or diva or a pain in my butt. It's like brands and agencies don't want to work with talent that's high maintenance and a pain in their butt and unprofessional and transparent. So like you have to have good relationships with everybody. This is so true. And I also think like as big as this world is, it's really quite small. Like you run into the same people, especially like, well, actually I think in marketing and probably every single industry that there is, everyone thinks it's a ginormous world, but when it comes down to it, like, you know, you named a list of people earlier in the podcast. I'm like, yeah, I've had conversations with all of them yeah. separately. Yeah. And I don't know them because of you. You know what I mean? Like it's, um, it's amazing to me how truly small the world is when you have selected kind of your corner of the world. Yep. And honestly, it gets smaller every day and I love it. Yeah. Yeah. Love it. Same. You have know, a weird run in where you're like, Oh, didn't know that you knew that person. Okay, no to self. But like, oh, wait, you know, because then it's like, I don't know if you feel this, but there's that sort of like, you know, when like you meet your best friend's best friend, you're like, oh, by osmosis. Yeah, yeah. You're just like, I already like you. Like, I'm already opted into liking you. Like, there's a little yeah, bit yeah. of that where it's like, oh, I already like you. But now you know Tammy and Taylor and all these other people. So it's like, oh. Yeah. I just like you even more now because now it's like, oh, I can talk to you about those people and like we can share experiences or make connections and yeah, relationship was that with them. So it's like, it's awesome. Yeah. It makes such a huge difference. I am such a huge advocate for relationships and keeping, and also like being of service to people, I think is mm-hmm. huge from like a branding perspective as well too. Like, what can I do for you? I don't need anything, but at some point, like I want, I want to go out there in the world and be of service to people. How can I help you? Where is your biggest need? And then like, and being able to help you will then help me maybe in the future if something happens. Like I, I've just seen this unfold, especially like in the last month and a half where I'm like, wow, this is, it's mind boggling mm-hmm. 
how mm-hmm. simple it is, but yeah. also building out relationships that takes time. It's, it's the garden. This is going to sound so cheesy. It's a garden in life. You, it doesn't grow unless you water it and you always have to be. And this is probably why I think of it as like being of service, right? Like being of service to me is watering your garden. Like I got, I got to keep it up or else like, I'm not going to have a garden to go back to, mm-hmm. you know? Love me a good plant metaphor. So yes. Yes. And I'm not even a green thumb, but it works. We better move on before I completely turn that green thumb brown. Um, I do have a final question for you. Okay. Because I could talk to you forever. And I'm also watching the time now. We can truly talk forever. But I would like to know if you knew then what you know now, what is the advice, marketing advice, advice in general that you give to yourself? Don't you hate when you like have the question ahead of time and you still don't have your good answer? <laughs> this is exactly what I give it ahead of time. Like, no, I don't want to. I've been thinking about it and I'm like, oh, I don't know. <laughs> what do I tell um, myself? Yeah, I, I mean, the life advice, right, is always when you get this question, like, you shouldn't have dated that guy or you should have broken up with him sooner. Like, he's always back. like That's always a good answer for like, if you knew then what you know now. Then what you know now. But like specific to marketing, um, if I knew then what I know now, what marketing advice would I have given myself? I would say to have like bet and believed in myself Mm. I've realized it sooner. I want to be clear. I've never not believed in myself and I've never not bet on myself, but I was very much like, well, let's do and figure it out. And like, it'll work out. Like that's just basically a better life motto. Um, yeah. Were there times in my twenties and early thirties where I doubted myself um, and didn't give myself enough credit and didn't speak up enough and like, didn't take credit for stuff that I did or didn't like self promote more. And you know, more concerned with other people's feelings or perceptions. Sure. Um, I have, you know, you, a woman in your forties is like beginning your best years. I'm 44. That is truth. Like, yes. So that confidence, that clarity on speaking up for what I believe to be right and not being afraid and honestly not even caring because I'm like, this is what's supposed to be talked about or this is what's supposed to be said. Um, and realizing as I'm doing more of that, how much probably in my 20s and 30s, I spun a little bit more and like, oh, what if, what if, what if? It's like, nobody cares. Like, it's all going to be fine. So yeah, I would have loved in reflection, like, you know, Joanna in her 20s and 30s to have been more, probably less go with the flow and more kind of like, it'll all work out, but just like take that little step forward out of the group and like raise your hand and speak up. And again, I don't want to imply I didn't do those things because I definitely did. Yeah. Do it like with more intention around my own business and brand than was probably in existence when I started. You know, again, it was more just like, I'm trying and I'll figure it out. Whereas now I'm just much more like assertive and clear and intentional. And so I wish I had that. Or I don't wish, but like given the question, I would yeah, give yeah, yeah. Um, because I am super grateful to that Joanna and like what she did and who I am now because of her. But yeah, just, just to have been a little bit perhaps more intentional. I mean, I've been super grateful. Yeah. It's all worked out. And like, that's just been my personality. Um, and I don't know now if it's just like wisdom or, or what, but I definitely have a lot more intention around how I do things and make choices. And I, I would say, yeah, it would have been cool to see what I would have done with more of that in my twenties and thirties. Again, no shit in that for me because like she was awesome too. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was just going to say that same thing is, you know, I think it's probably because the moment that you found yourself being more intentional, the speed at which you grew, like accelerated. So I can see in that reflection, wow, had I done that five years ago? Had I done that five years earlier? 
Can yeah. you imagine where I would be right now? Yeah. And I yeah. actually think that that's really great advice. I think one of the things that I do, I'm also 44 and I'm also just learning that now. I'm like, oh, no, 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 no. I, I should also be intentional. I, I would go back and tell my, I would also tell myself to be a little bit more intentional. Also give yourself some grace. Like it will yeah. all work itself yeah. out. I think I'm probably a little bit more apprehensive than you were of like the go with the flow where I'm so type A. I'm like, but I want to see how it's all going to work out. And I want to be able to map it out, you oh, know? Yeah. So I almost need that other balance. Yeah. That's not me at all. I'm very much like... <laughs> I'm, I mean, I'm a Pisces. I'm like super just like, oh, it's all going to work. And, you know, Pisces plus the belief of like, it's all going to work out. It's all going to be fine. Has very much been, I have been much more accommodating and just um, in a lot of areas in my life, like relationships and and friends and, and yeah. job things. Um, and I know people who know me when they listen, basically my mom, because she's going to listen to this, like, hi, mom, love you, is that we'll say hi to my mom too because she will listen. Yeah. Um, <laughs> like, bless the moms, love the moms. Um, I'm sure she's gonna be like, Joanna, like, you know, all my friends are like, but you're so you're such a go-getter and you're so assertive and you've been so confident, like all these times, you know, for years and decades that we've known you. And it's true, but I think specific to some like in this arena, just having a little bit more intention. And you're right, maybe it was literally even for five years ago. Does it mean having to go back to my 20s and 30s? Yeah. Um, Oh, I guess five years ago doing the math, I was 39. But anyway. Uh, <laughs> no more. one's doing fast math. No one's doing fast yeah. math here, so don't worry. <laughs> it's like, yeah, imagine if I had been less behind the scenes and a little bit more like out in front and sharing stuff exactly to your point. Like imagine yeah, what it would have looked like because it all would have been good and it's all fantastic now. But like, yeah, there's there's definitely been a kind of like, I'm good just behind the scenes like I'm fine and I am working on personal and professional stuff to like move out in front because yeah. it's a very comfortable space for me like I don't want eyes on me you know I, I'm like yeah. the connector like bring everyone in the room and I'm happy just to sit there and like watch everyone chat and connect like it brings me so much joy um I don't need to be the center of attention and I think people confuse that because I'm extroverted and loud and a connector and like good at organizing and hurting people like in person yeah. or you know like just organizing stuff and so I often have friends confuse that I'm like no no I don't want to be I'm happy to just you know I remember organizing events for politicians like Hillary Clinton or John Kerry or anyone who was coming through who was a uh, um um like speaking on their behalf and I was going to say an affiliate, but I'm like, no, no, that's the wrong industry. Um, you know, coming through as like a campaign ambassador, you know, you'd have all the people who've supported them, like Gloria Steinem or, you yeah. know, I remember Governor Richardson, whatever, like for John Kerry, all the surrogates coming through. It was great to like organize events, everyone would get in the room and you'd be like, oh my God, Hillary's on stage or like Bill Clinton's on stage and like be the person who organized, led the organizing of that. And I would just like happily sit in the back of the room and just be like, no, no, I want no part of this. I just am happy to like watch my work unfold. And so yeah. you know, I'm trying to like, you it's know. A, it's a dance. Out. It's a dance though. You know what I mean? Like it, it is definitely a dance between like, you don't always have to be out there in the spotlight and to shine. Like you can shine even in the, I'm going to use air quotes for the behind the scenes because behind the scenes is also what people see unfold. Well, yeah. I could truly talk to you forever. And I feel like we have four more podcasts in us just today alone. And not just because I've had two cups of coffee, but I appreciate you taking so much time and just kind of sharing your insights on just on branding and just everything. I just truly appreciate you. Thank you so much. You are so welcome. I am happy to share all my opinions on everything. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I'll talk to you soon. Okay. Well, it is always a good time talking to Joe or <laughs> Joanna. Uh, we will call her by the full name here. Keep it formal. Um, although we got very relaxed in the conversation. I want to give you those three takeaways that I took from our conversation. Number one, building a personal brand and marketing oneself is essential to be successful in business, especially as a talent manager. 
Um, and that means kind of sharing behind the scene moments, negotiation tips and experiences to really be helpful and interesting for the audience that you're speaking to, that your brand speaks to, right? Being authentic and enthusiastic in sharing can really attract potential clients and make one an expert in the industry. And that's specific to talent management, but I do think that's really great advice that bridges over really any kind of industry or any job that you do. It's the personal branding side. Number two, uh, that my takeaway from here is it's important to listen to feedback and take action on it, even if it's uncomfortable or outside of your comfort zone. Now, Joanna had described getting a few nudges from clients and colleagues to really share more about her business and her expertise. And eventually she realized that she could own her space on the internet and built her authority in that field by being authentic, by leaning in and taking action on this feedback. She was able to really create valuable content and build on her brand. And the third and last takeaway is the importance of building and maintaining relationships. And friends, that's across any industry um, and really any job, not just influencer marketing or talent management. Good relationships can really help you grow your brand, bring in new business and create opportunities for collaboration and connection, really being genuine and authentic. I know sometimes we overuse it, but it's true. Checking in without any agenda or following up um, in some way to build and nurture relationships. The world is smaller than we think, and running into the same people is common. So being a good professional and enjoyable to work with, being approachable, it can lead to even more opportunities. Now, I'd love to hear the nuggets of insights that you walked away with from today's episode. So definitely be sure to share them with me on LinkedIn. Uh, follow us on YouTube, Spotify, or wherever you listen to podcasts. Thank you so much for my podcast producers, Content Allies. You help me get each episode done. They are literally my right-hand people. It's not even like one person, it's multiple people. So check out the episode page to learn more about Joanna and how you can get in touch with me too. Thank you so much for spending time with me today. Until next time, may the conversation flow, the laughter linger, and the outlook remain optimistic, but grounded in reality. This is Katya, signing off.